I was recently talking with some friends about our favorite 80s action movies, and I had a strange realization. I think you can't remake 80s action movies. Because every 80s action movie has a weird B-plot villain who wouldn't be a villain today. It's always an authority figure trying to do their very reasonable job for the sake of public safety. I, I don't know if it's because I'm older and more responsible, or just because the 80s were weird, probably just because the 80s were weird, but in retrospect, I oddly sympathize with these B-plot villains. Let's start with Ghostbusters. Now I want to talk about the B-plot villain, not the main villains of Zool or Gozer, but the EPA agent Walter Peck, who wants to shut down the Ghostbusters. This environmental protection agent wants to shut down the Ghostbusters because the equipment they have is unsanctioned, unknown, and in the middle of New York City. We just had a visit from the environmental protection agency. How's the grid holding up? It's not good. Yeah, you should be trying to shut them down. You're the Environmental Protection Agency. This is the main thing that you do. They took over a firehouse in Midtown and are dealing with nuclear materials. Sure, ghosts are real and being busted, that's great. But it's completely reasonable that this guy doesn't want to turn New York City into Chernobyl just because ghosts are proven real this week. Die Hard is another great example of a villain who is actually a very reasonable character. Played by the same actor as in Ghostbusters, actor William Atherton, who seems to have made a living in the 80s by playing a dick who in retrospect is actually a very reasonable person, he plays journalist Richard Thornburg, who's trying to report on the terrorist incident at Nakatomi Plaza. And this guy is a villain because he is effective and is actually trying to report this terrorist attack. He is better at finding out information than the FBI, who are willing to let hostages die and are having a gross mishandling of this situation. But he's the villain because you're not supposed to question cops in the 80s. Always assume that there's a rogue cop from a different state in the building. Also, the one hero cop in this movie outside of John McClane is actor Reginald Bell Johnson. You probably know him as Carl Winslow from Family Matters. He was also the cop in Ghostbusters. Okay, Ghostbusters. The mayor wants to see you guys. The whole island's going crazy. Let's go. I like to imagine that he was Carl Winslow in all of these roles, and Carl Winslow has just had a hell of a police career. This cop has a C-plot where he shot a kid who was holding a toy gun. And he's supposed to be the one we sympathize with. Hey, the 80s? What the hell was wrong with you, the 80s? And Lethal Weapon. The psychologist in Lethal Weapon, played by actor Mary Ellen Trainer, who was also the desk reporter in Die Hard, yet another actor making her living in the 80s playing a very reasonable person holding back that pesky wildcard lead character, she's trying her best to stop an admittedly suicidal psycho from working. He's also been known to pull his gun I know when he all the about man, Riggs, Not Doc. enough. He's a tough bastard, all right? He's on the edge, sir. I'm telling you, he may be psychotic. It's a bunch of psych bullshit. Really? No, it is not a bunch of psych bullshit. Riggs should not be on the force. Everybody got very lucky that he fell into a case that happened to involve an international drug cartel and some of his ex-Vietnam buddies. Because if Riggs ended up on any other case, say a teen suicide, which is what he was assigned at first, he would end up killing the same number of people because Riggs is insane. But what do you think? Did I miss your favorite example of a crazy B-plot villain from the 80s that would not be a villain today? Let me know in the comments. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel. You can also hit that notification bell and you'll be notified whenever we have new videos go up. All the videos are free, so enjoy yourself. And I'll see you in the next video.